there. Welcome to another episode of Front Row. Today we have the distinct pleasure of having with us Mr. Mangalayapa, uh, the uh, Chairman of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka, who is no stranger to the Salon Chamber, who is also a past Secretary General and a long-time CEO of one of the largest corporates in Sri Lanka. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, Mr. Yapa. But we would like to hear from you how you have seen in your opinion the global trends perhaps in the last two years and its impact for Sri Lanka. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Tyagaraja and happy to be here at the front row. Uh, yes, uh, I mean uh, we are living in a very vulnerable, unpredictable global uh, political and economical uh, scenario. But nevertheless, um, and, uh, and in the midst of all these things, the FDI trends have been uh, not very positive, it's declining. But amidst that, uh, I think Sri Lanka has, still has a great opportunity. One, because we are starting off uh, on a small base, uh, we are not done so well, so therefore growth is still very much possible. Second, I think we also have uh, our unique uh, selling points. Uh, which uh, we have not necessarily uh, communicated to the investor communicated, uh, community in the past. So we need to start doing that, we have been doing that. Uh, and and uh, also clearing out uh, some of the obstacles uh, for investment, uh, that has not been done for a long time. So in that perspective, although the global situation is declining and unpredictable, I think Sri Lanka is still uh, in, not in an extremely bad spot in terms of attracting FDI. Uh, what is uh, worrying is, uh, although there is interest in many uh, investors, including Japan and others, uh, traction is not enough, uh, sufficient to realize an investment. Uh, that is because, um, I, I, I think partly because of uh, the, 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 the global kind of downturn that uh, most foreign investors are uh, under pressure. Uh, and unpredictability, they are not sure which way to go, so they are taking a little longer time to make their decisions, but they will get used to this situation. Uh, and other is uh, lack of uh, information about uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, we need to brand Sri Lanka as a high potential investment destination for certain uh, sectors, not all sectors, but certain sectors where there is uh, potential for Sri Lanka. For example, port and shipping, logistics, entrepreneur uh, trade, that, that is uh, given us. Sri Lanka definitely has a huge potential in that. Tourism is another. ICT, KPO, BPM sector is another with uh, highly talented people in this part of the world. But we must also uh, look at attracting some uh, investors into manufacturing because uh, that's uh, not a developed uh, area in Sri Lanka. In terms of employment generation and inclusive growth, I think we need to look at that sector as well. And there are areas like the rubber sector, there is other uh, electronic components, ships and boats, uh, automotive components. These are few uh, that has been identified in the national export strategy. So our investment also is uh, not just investment per se, but it has to be export catalytic investment. So that uh, we will address on one side uh, the, the uh, FDI values, on the other side it will help uh, balance of trade. Uh, CEO for Vietnam and Assam Markets for Standard Chartered, Nirup Sapru, in a, also in a previous interview, uh, told me that the three critical success factors which he saw in Vietnam uh, in attracting the tremendous amount of FDI they have done were the clear consistency of a policy framework, an extremely stable political environment, as well as their passion to really be in the middle of ASEAN to engage multi-markets in facilitating exports across these multi-markets using its locational advantages. Now I know Sri Lanka has this tremendous locational advance. India has an aspiration to become a 5 trillion economy in the next five years with approximately 60% coming from services. As chairman of BUI, where do you see an opportunity to position Sri Lanka to get its fair share of that pie. Yes, uh, I think that is absolutely correct. I mean, uh, now Vietnam uh, and many ASEAN countries have been certainly working uh, within ASEAN, uh, doing tremendously well. ASEAN has been a very successful regional uh, cooperation agreement 
which has benefited the region uh, very well because uh, intra uh, region trade uh, is tremendous uh, but unfortunately the SAC region has not necessarily done the same thing that that's a challenge that we have to overcome both businesses and and bureaucrats like us and the politicians has to sort out but having said that India India's uh, tremendous growth has been a uh, uh, great uh, impetus for Sri Lanka to grow. Uh, for, we, we virtually have added the new terminal has 50 percent uh, uh, capacity and within four years we are now up to the brim. So uh, that shows the potential, sure. that shows the opportunity. And, um, and, and not only India but even if you look at Bangladesh, uh, Pakistan and the rest of the uh, countries around us our connectivity uh, with the ASEAN through Singapore FTA. I think we are we are in a, in a much bigger uh, market uh, sphere compared to uh, Vietnam. But what is important is uh, the other two elements that uh, you mentioned. Uh, one is consistent and uh, clear policy framework, which we the government has started, but I think a lot more has to come into that. And articulating it very clearly as a country. Uh, I, I think we are there, but not necessarily sure that we are there. So there is a little little uh, lack of clarity in that, uh, I would say. So we need to be more clearer in some of these uh, aspects. And when we are branding country as a FDI destination, that is what is necessary from the um, top uh, hierarchy in the country. This policy has to come out very uh, clearly and orchestrated so that the market is no from a definite, uh, you know, certainty is there that it is coming. But uh, there is a lot of vulnerability within Sri Lanka. So that really clutters out the market, that, that's a problem. And the third aspect is, uh, I think we have good human uh, resources, but we need to scale up. Uh, and because with all the disruptions, technological advancements and uh, things that is happening, uh, we need a new uh, breed of human resources, highly skilled people who are very versatile. It is not necessarily specializing in one area. Today, I think it is multidisciplinary uh, versatility is, is the key. So how can you develop that new talent? I think we have the base right, but we need to build on that. Uh, and they created this ministry under which the BOI comes in. Uh, I recall at that time, the model was to replicate or to uh, to emulate the Pemendu model out of Malaysia, which was deemed to be a regional success story. Uh, one of the key ingredients was that was the legislative enactment and the power to be given to the bureaucracy to implement that Correct. under a single point within the political framework. Now, unfortunately for a layman like me, I, I have yet not seen that actually transform. In your opinion, would that have made a difference if, if the right teeth was given to the framework? Uh, to be honest, yes, they are because uh, I think uh, the the, the failure is not so much not having the right vision and the right policy, but uh, policy implementation. That's where things get dragged. Uh, so decision is not made fast enough. Uh, so time, the, the efficiency of the implementation is also very important from an investor's perspective. Uh, I know certain matters that we are we are dealing uh, in large investments. Maybe it takes two, three years for uh, it to reach uh, uh, finality. And that's a too long a time, uh, because that, that is where I think we need uh, at this juncture, because time is, uh, is running out. Uh, we are not the only party who is seeking this investment. There are other competing markets in the, in the region, and they're all trying hard uh, to attract this investment. So there we need to be efficient. I only hope for people like Joel and also for other good quality professionals who could be attracted into a bureaucracy that whoever comes into power learns from this and gives the right sort of teeth into the, the legislative right powers and hold people accountable exactly. for their actions if they want to get this act together. But thank you very much again you. for coming here and sharing your thoughts this morning with us. Thank you. Thank you very day. much. Thank you.